All right, so you might be wondering, Alex, why are you pulling up into your driveway with the camera already rolling? It makes no sense. Well, because it's cold. And uh, I just got something, and we're going to get out of the car. <clears throat> so, yeah, we did get something pretty big. You can see it's a bumper. Um, I don't know how I'm going to take this out without cracking the paint. Grab it right here. Right here. Okay, let's take it inside. Man, it is way too hot to be doing this. All right, nice. All right. Yeah, I think I'm too dark. Ugh. Am I still dark? Background's gonna be a little bit overexposed because I'm in the garage. We are here to address our front bumper situation, which basically I went over this in the last video where there were some dings and dents, not really dents, but some little nicks going on in the front bumper. On the left side, we had little damage that came with the car, a little crack. And then on the right side, I got into a little fender bender because some ladies don't know how to drive, but we're good. I mean, I kind of messed up too by not looking straight, but that lady was going and she should have gone. We're not going to talk about that. We finally have the new front bumper. Uh, that was a headache to get because you see this box right here on our right? That's another bumper that I'm getting refunded for because this front left side, this driver's side is cracked. Like, come on. And you can see the box is like mangled inside. And you know, I don't blame the company or the shipping company. Like none of us could have seen this happening, but like, uh, this bumper right here was like one of the last bumpers that the distribution center had that holds all these parts. And I was like, dang. Long story short, carparts.com, where I bought this from. Basically, I called customer service. I was like, hey, you sent me a cracked bumper. Um, is there any way you guys can send me another one? Because I just wanted the bumper. They're like, yeah, we'll take care of it. Uh, just send us some photos and we'll send you another one. I'm like, all right, easy. So I sent the photo and they were like, okay, we have an order placed for your new bumper coming in. Should be there in about a week. Easy. Um, I called them like a week later. Actually, like a week and a half later, I'm like, so where's this bumper? And the next person I talked to at carparts.com was like, oh, the last person that was helping you basically refreshed the order to make it seem like, you know, the order was going through, but the distribution company never got noticed that they needed to send me a bumper because they were out of stock. So Alex, how did you get this bumper? Um, eBay. That bumper shipped was like $850, and then this one shipped was like 600 I had obviously just picked it up from paint today, which is like another 300 which is not bad compared to other shops that are charging like 500 I don't know if I'll be installing this bumper today because it's just so dang hot. And also I kind of got to read the paper talking about how long it takes to cure because I might not even put this on the bumper with how much I drive. Maybe just let it cure off the car. But there are some bits I do want to show you that are going on the car. So this box right here consists of my front lip. And you're like, Alex, how is this a front lip when it's so many pieces? Well, because it's a multi-piece front lip. It's pretty cheap. Didn't feel like buying carbon fiber because I don't feel like dealing with a damaged front lip or, you know, I just don't care to pay that much for a front lip and it's really just for aesthetics and it's good enough. Like, yeah. I honestly don't know how to install this because this was shipped from basically a Chinese supplier. I mean, it should be pretty straightforward. It basically kind of goes like, like that. Oh my gosh, come on. That, so like, that's kind of what the front lip will look like. We're probably gonna install this all off of the car, kind of cause like I already have the bumper here. And we have these two pieces, lower grill area, cause they're both cracked on the current bumper. So these came actually from China, cause this front lip came from a supplier in the US who basically just bought this from Alibaba. Um, but these came from China. They look pretty good, pretty OEM. And then we got this, which is black front grill. Nobody, not really nobody, not a lot of people are a fan of this matte chrome look. I'm not against it. It just does not wear well over time. I'll keep this because it's a nice accent piece for the front because I don't want it to be all black. I'll probably pick back up tomorrow with all of this because it's already like two o'clock and I don't feel like ripping apart my bumper in the middle of the hottest part of the day in Texas. 
Say I didn't finish the bumper tonight because you don't know how car parts work, rather car installations. I don't want to go to the gym tomorrow morning without a front bumper and it's going to be all weird. Things falling off because again, we don't know what could happen to cars. I'm just going to save this for tomorrow. So, good morning. It has been two days since I last shot the last shot that you saw. And that's because whenever I picked up the bumper, I, for some reason, at the end of the night, I was like, you know what? Let me go check out that little piece of paper that they give me along with my receipt that tells you how to take care of your paint after you get your bumper. And uh, on this sheet of paper from Mako's, it says, no commercial car washes for six weeks. Your paint is to dry. Your paint is dry to touch, but not something completely for, not completely cured, not cured completely for six weeks. Six weeks? Bro, my sister got her whole car painted at Mako's and just drove it around. I guess didn't wash her car for that long. I'm not gonna do that. Stop the cap. <laughs> wax your vehicle about three times a year. I can't tell if it says wax. Dude, this is the paper I'm reading, look at it. And I cannot read the parts that are very faint. Like, I'm, what I'm gonna start working on is, I'm just gonna try and assemble the front lip. The front lip came with a couple of self-tapping screws, which are just screws that drive right into the plastic. I guess it's for the lip to bumper. But I bought some more screws, and I also bought this set of nuts and bolts, cause uh, I kind of want to secure down the lip to the, the bumper, you know? I don't want it to fall off. Probably gonna replace like four of those with four of these. I should have some washers in the garage to make sure the surfaces aren't, you know, cracking or nothing. I'm gonna eat breakfast real quick and then we'll start working in the garage. Yeah, it's already that hot that I'm not gonna be wearing a shirt. First of all, that's more laundry. Second, I'm gonna be drenched in sweat if I'm wearing any kind of clothes. I'm wearing shorts. If you live in Texas, you understand. <clears throat> Let's get the easiest thing knocked out, which is inserting these plastic inserts into the bumper. And these are brand new, because like I said, on the old one, they cracked. Um, why is it not fitting? This is what happens when you buy all these parts from China. Oh, yes. And this last part. How this is gonna reach that. Ow! This was such a butthole to put on. You know, the fitment is not the absolute best. Probably it being both not from the OEM manufacturer. Um, I'll take it, because you really can't tell unless you are peeping at my front bumper like that. Which I don't know why you should be. Let's go ahead and pull the car up into the garage so I'm not in the sun. Car's in the garage. We have a couple of these star-shaped, um, what do you call these? Bolts? Bolts? We have one, two, three, four, five. I'm stupid. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, which I believe these are like little pop-up tabs. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get those off real quick. This tool, this tool right here has come so clutch. I bought this in like this prying tool kit um, for like plastic trim. And it came with this metal one too. This thing has Easy. All right, so now we got this front portion kind of loose. There's a bug right there. Yo, there's a bug right here and it's making me very uncomfortable. On the inside of this tire fender well, um, apparently there are these like four rivet plastic things. I don't know if I can use this plastic tool remover to get underneath it. They definitely are one time use though, but I can replace them with different ones that I have that aren't one time use. These are just breaking, so that's fine. Now, if I broke all of these and I can't get this little trim off, then we are screwed. And so from my car accident, from the little fender bender, um, there are one, I guess two that are missing. I mean, it makes my life easier. Should be able to kind of just peel this off, I believe. Yep. Come out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That takes off this plastic part and then it exposes one, two, and then a third one that's not here. 
Alright. Other side. Oh, this one just kind of comes right out. Now, a lot of people do lift their cards up to make it easier to access these, and these are just falling apart. I mean, this card does have 80,000 miles on it. Alright, so apparently there's like two more screws in here, which I don't know how to access. I did forget. Let's take off the... We should probably take off the uh, eight mils that are on the bottom of it, because that's kind of holding everything up right now. Could you imagine being so rich that, that you have a Roomba for your garage? Like, it just goes off on its own at nighttime. Don't even gotta worry about it, just come home to a clean garage. Eight. I mean, I did watch one video. There's one dude who makes a decent video on how to take this front bumper off. All right. Now we need an extension with eight mil. All right. I honestly do not know where the heck these eight mils are. The dude in the video just kind of like pried it up like it was nothing. I'm just like, bruh. Ugh. Oh. Uh, oh, it's way up. Oh. Yep. Okay. This is this car thing. Okay, first of all, dude likes me saying that they're 8 mils. They're definitely 10 mils. It says 10 mil, right? Alright, I'm not tripping. But all I have to do is really just break them once and then just kind of undo them with a tool, which you think is the tool won't lock onto them. And uh, yeah, I'll get this off. And this should take the bumper off. I'll probably have to take off the front grill. Both 8 mils are. are 10 mils so there's like two very silver these are aluminum um bolts that go literally like where this line is you'll be able to pull this back go straight up and they're literally right next to each other Hopefully you can see, but there are one, two, and three. So just grab a flathead, kind of push down and towards you. Um, and the tricky part about this is you don't want these tabs to catch on to the other side there. Dude, this dragonfly is disgusting. You know, when it doesn't pry, I like to use a pry uh, tool. So what I'll do is I'll kind of stick it under, kind of see what's going on. Bring it up a little bit, kind of pull, and then it'll either break or all just come apart. And in my case, some of them bend. Um, all my tabs are still intact. Um, the bottom ones, you really don't know what's going on down there. So just, just yank it off if you're replacing it with the black one, honestly. That should set our bumper apart from the entire car. I lied, I gotta do this passenger side, those two 10 mils underneath the fender. Shout out to that dude. I just took like a 10 minute break and apparently there's like three clips like one, two, and three that I really still can't see but I think if you like kind of pry the bumper back. Oh, I can see it. Oh, that's one. Oh, there's two. And then number three. Three. Oh, that loosens up the whole bumper. Do it on the other side, take the bumper off, and then we'll see how dirty it is. If it's really dirty, we'll go ahead and kind of like wipe it down, clean it up, get some loose debris out, and try to put on a new bumper. We got this front bumper off. There are some things that should be noted when taking this off is this thing just kind of floats. It's like the bracket helps hold the bumper. There is not enough slack when it comes to taking off all the sensors and such. You have to keep the bumper basically on the car. You just have to dig your hand in there, get the clip, push it, pull it out. There's two on each end and then two in the middle. And then there's a couple of like loom wire organization inside of there, which really isn't that hard to do. You just kind of, before I even put this on, I do want to realign my headlight because it is kind of pushed back. So I'm probably going to have to dig a little deeper. I don't know what this is. I'm going to see what I could find to realign this headlight because it is pushed in. So 
I'll get back to you in just a sec. What is working on cars without blading? Um, hold on. So I finally pulled up the headlight. It's in the right spot that I need it. Everything lines up. The rubber grommets line up on the headlight. It's a little damaged, but I'll take it over a misfitted headlight. So what I had to do was I took off this plastic trim. Just kind of sits on top. This kind of sits on top too. There's two bolts that hold in the entire headlight on the top side. And there's two that hold them by like two hangers on the bottom side. So what I did was I kind of loosened this bottom one right here. I had to take this off a little bit. It's just one screw over here. And basically just kind of loosened them. Took some pretty hard tugging to pull this headlight out because it was kind of jammed back. We should be good now. I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick because this blood is getting sticky and disgusting. And I'm gonna throw this towel away. But yeah, we got that off. Um, we're gonna transfer all the sensors onto the new bumper. We should be pretty close to finishing up. Aside from actually getting the uh, new front lip and the black grill on. Spent another like 15 minutes inside just relaxing. It's been uh, pretty hot and stressful trying to figure this all out. Got the headlight aligned like I said. And we're gonna transfer all these. The bumper is laying down with the two kidney grills up like that. So we're gonna rotate this so we don't get any of the sensors mixed up. And if we lay it down, it's the same direction. Now it should just be like everything. Left goes to the left, right goes to the right. Just kind of straightforward. We also do have to transfer over the plastic trim. So like the vent at the bottom and then the black plastic up top, which should be easy from the back side now that I have access to just kind of unclip them. This wasn't as bad once I started using a flathead. I was trying to use like the pry tools and stuff. Too soft. This plastic is strong, has 80,000 miles on it. This is still the original bumper, which I believe. Let's get this done, because I am hungry. All right, sat around for like 30 minutes, figuring out what the heck I need to do because I need to order two different things. Well, I already ordered them. Um, one of them being these side markers. I did not realize I needed new ones of these just cause I didn't think about it. These go on like the side right here. I ordered a pair. And then another thing I did not know this bumper had was it had extra PDC, which is a parking detection sensor thingy. I don't know why this bumper has extra PDCs on the side, but it doesn't have the camera in the middle. Cause usually it'll have the parking sensors on the side if you get like the full coverage, which has a camera in the front. I believe it has camera on the sides, but this one doesn't. My car doesn't. Don't know why this one has extra parking holes, but doesn't have the camera. But we're still gonna install it. It'll be fine to drive. There's not really any components that if they get wet, they're gonna get bad. Plus everything's like weather sealed. It shouldn't be raining really in the next. It was raining for like the last month, but most of that has gone away and now it's 100 degrees every day. So we should be chilling. I also might park this car in the garage just because they said at least keep this out of the sun and that's kind of impossible in Texas. Or I might just let it be. I don't know. Let's install this bumper and eat food because I am hungry. This is still going to take a while to dress everything up. <sighs> All right, I've washed my hands about five or six times now because I've been stuck a couple times. Whether it be on the car, mentally, under the car, I don't know, got the bumper on. I mentioned earlier in the video that I had these rivets that I could use to replace the one-time use rivets that go along like the side trim. They don't fit. I'm gonna go to Harbor Freight. They had a couple that looked the same. Hopefully it works as BMW likes to make a lot of special parts that nobody can use. Yeah, as you can see, the bumper is finally on. All I gotta do is slap on the black grill. Let me do that real quick. Oh my gosh. So that changes a lot of the front grill. Think about it. This is what the car used to look like. Like that. And now it looks like that. Looks a thousand times better. Honestly, the front lip, I'm probably going to put on at a different time. I'm not sure. Like I could put it on later tonight. We'll see how I feel. I'm gonna go grab my mom some dinner. 
after that decide if we should do this or not right now which honestly like out of the bumpers on i feel much more relieved i'm gonna wipe down this front bumper real quick all right we're just gonna spray this down with just a little bit of water this is literally just water they said not to use chemicals so i'm not gonna use chemicals straight up water get off all this disgusting sweat and debris oh this already looks so much better Mind you, this paint job isn't perfect. There's a lot of imperfections in the paint when it comes to like a bunch of particles in the paint. I'm not gonna complain for $300, honestly. I just wanted the cracks to get out of here. And as long as we don't get any more cracks, we are pretty Gucci. She looks nice. Much better. She looks proper. I don't get my mom some dinner and uh, think about putting this front lip on. It's been a whole week since I recorded that last clip. And that is because installing the front bumper was a pain in the butt. Why might you ask? Because there's a bunch of stuff that you need for the bumper. And there was just a lot of things going on on my bumper because the whole front headlight, the parking sensors, there was a lot that went on. So the first thing we're going to address is the auto PDC, which is a parking deten detection I don't know what the C stands for, but the auto PDC had a malfunction and that's because whenever I was putting the front bumper back on, I forgot to plug in the two outside PDCs. So I fixed that yesterday and I had some friends help around kind of hold the bumper in place because the wires are very tight. On top of that, before you put the bumper back on after fixing the PDC, turn the car on and turn the PDC on and see if it works. Because if one sensor isn't working, I'm pretty sure the whole front or the whole rear doesn't activate. Keep the bumper off turn it on see if it works have a friend walk around see if it scans anyone if it does then good if not then keep the bumper off unplug it and you know try to flip the switch and then plug it back in because it really only goes in one way but it's hard to tell especially in such a tight area make sure you check that the front lip i was just really waiting for friends to come help me with the install because my ocd would go nuts if i had misaligned it and it's not that hard you really just line up the ends where the uh, fender roll starts um that's where the front lip ends so it's really easy to line that up just make sure you drill in once drill on the other side and it should be held up. Friends really don't need to help from that point, but it's always good to have an eye to see what's centered and how crooked it looks. So I think it looks pretty good. The black grill, pretty sure I mentioned that earlier, suits the whole front end. We did install a performance part. This, what I have right here, was the original air filter. It's very disgusting. And don't worry, that's not all caked on. It's a filter on top of the folded paper filter. Um, it's just really great because that is a dirty part, but it's not that whole layer of cake. Pretty disgusting in my opinion. Uh, this doesn't seem too bad, but this does restrict a lot of airflow. So we got one of these. I mentioned in the last video that stickers, but we did mention in the last video that we could either get a drop-in filter, which is what this is, or we can get the MST intake, which is like 420 plus tax. No matter what make you have, a lot of people are going to say the stock air box performs better than a hot air intake, which really should be colder intake, but everyone jokes around and says it's a hot air intake that was a wasp. And for people that aren't into cars and don't understand what we're saying is, the engine bay is hot, yes, we know. It is 200, 300, 400 degrees in the engine bay, maybe even hotter, but your car runs great whenever there's cold air because cold air is easier to compress. More compression of air means more power, more efficiency, no matter what your case is. Um, and so yeah, we call these a cold air intake. It's what sucks in air into the engine. Engine, air, fuel, fire, spark, combustion, makes the car go. The reason why these cool looking filters um, like this, like the one with the pipe, and then it has like the cone at the end. Um, you might see those in people's cars, but like, oh, it's a race car. Um, not always the case. A lot of times those intake filters with the whole cone and everything, they're actually just sucking in the hot air that the engine is expelling. Oh my gosh. Oh, I think the wasp is gone. Oh my gosh. All right, I think we're good. Long story short, what I was trying to say is I'm just gonna use the filter. It's literally like half the size of the filter that I just showed you. It sucks in more air than the stock one. Hence, proving performance gains. It's very marginal. A lot of people do it just for the sound so they can hear the turbos go. We are now on stage two, not stage two plus, stage two. And what that means is I should be pushing around like 410, 400 horsepower. 
We are in Texas, so it is hotter. And like I said, hotter air is not that great for an engine. It'll still push. It definitely pulls a bit harder, more responsive, especially with the air filter kind of being less restricted. Yeah, you might be wondering, why is my engine bay open? Engine bay, hood, why is my hood open? Cause I just put some distilled water in the coolant reservoir cause I don't feel like buying $30 coolant. And I live in Texas, so it's not like it's gonna get cold in here. And then I also put some of that in the windshield washer fluid until I can go buy some show. I hope you guys kind of followed with this video. Um, it's kind of all over the place. It really was about the front bumper. Then I just was like, let me do everything, the lip, the intake and yeah i think i'm pretty set with where the car is there's only a couple things left on a checklist hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope you're having a great summer drink water and don't overheat